Hey, 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 family, it's your girl Evelyn here, and I am back with another bookish video. So today, I want to share with you the physical books that I have that are on my TBR for probably August and September. I don't know if I'm gonna get through all of these in August, because I've only been averaging about two books a month. I think I did two in June, two in July. And so now there's these, right? So um, I mentioned in a previous video that my local library for my like suburb of Dallas that I live in is actually closed for renovations and they will be closed for a year. And so I was like, I, I just started coming here like, and y'all are closing. They're not opening up a um, temporary location until mid September. So that leaves me like a month and a half with no library to go to. And so I was telling the lady, I was like, Oh, you know, I need to bring back the books that I have. And she was like, no, 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 no. Because we would have to move them. She was like, as a matter of fact, check out as many as you want. And I think the limit on how many books you can check out is 50. I think I checked out 10. <laughs> uh, so I basically went through my personal TBR and then looked into the library system to see what, what they had available. They had several. And um, then I think like one or two that weren't on my list. And then there were a couple that they had, but they were already checked out. I'll leave a link to my Amazon TBR, which is about a hundred books of like black, uh, black romance by black authors with a black female and black male lead. Like that is my preferred genre right now. Light and fluffy, nothing super deep, not no, any dark romance. I'm not there yet. And so what I want to do is I want to share with you the books that I picked up. So I've, I've, I've grouped them in categories. And I think some of these um, were in my last TBR, but I've added to it. Um, and so I'm going to start, I'm going to start with the books that weren't necessarily on my TBR, but I was like, they're here. I've heard of these, so I might as well check them out, right? So the first one is You Made a Fool of uh, of Death with Your Beauty. By, oh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Um, basically, is like a deeply heartfelt romance novel, a love letter to the brave choices we make in the name of love, the cost we pay for, and the glory of reward at the end. So here's the thing. I think this one is not going to be light and fluffy. I think it's going to be like a deep, emotional uh romance okay and that's kind of how I've divided these categories and I'm gonna do the light and fluffy ones last which are the ones I'm most excited about but since they had this and it was there and I was like if I don't get it now I'm gonna have to buy it and uh I can't check it out or whatever uh for another month and a half I might as well get it right so that's the first one and then I picked up two books by Jane Agaro I picked up The Sweetest Remedy and Ties That Tether so one says, when a Nigerian woman falls for a man she knows will break her mother's heart, she must choose between love and her family. So again, romance, but I don't think this is going to be light and fluffy. And then the other one says, when a woman travels to Nigeria to, to attend the funeral of the father she never knew, she meets her extravagant family for the first time, finds a new and inspiring love interest, and discovers parts of herself she didn't know that were missing, right? So I believe this is the first book. And then this is the it. Uh, this is the first book, and then this is the second book, right? So this is about the same author. I probably will read these back to back whenever I get to these, and so that's kind of one category. Now I think, oh, here's a third book. Oh, by her, um, where we end to begin. It says star-crossed lovers get a second chance at romance when they're reunited at a wedding, right? So. I probably will read the three of these together, actually. Um, and so I was like, oh, she, I was like, bet. Okay, these all look really good to me. So <laughs> I'm excited about that. Uh, all by the same author. So yeah, and let me see. Is See if this is, oh, this is a page turning emotional and romantic journey of self-discovery, a beautiful exploration of culture, family, and romance. So again, I, I think these are going to be more like, deep heavy intense I might cry you know what I'm saying in these romances which I'm not opposed to I'm just not ready for dark romance okay so then I think I had these two books in my last 
TBR. I haven't read them yet, which is The Perfect Find by Tia Williams, who also wrote Seven Days in June. I believe this was her first book. I haven't read this yet. And then also Honey and Spice. I have not read this yet either, right? So I kind of put these three. They're giving me they're giving me similar vibes. Okay, these three are giving me similar vibes. And y'all, can I tell you, I prefer hardback books all day, every day over paperback. May not be the main thing, but if I if I can get it in hardback, I want it in hardback. Like that's just my preference. All right. So now let's get into the light and fluffy reads, okay? And the covers are a dead giveaway. So I have two, four, six. I have six books, okay? Six books. And um, let's start with the first one, which is The Accidental Pinup by Danielle Jackson. Um, it says things are heating up behind the camera. Rival photographers are forced to collaborate on a body positive a lingerie campaign, but they might have to readjust their focus when sparks fly. That's all I need. Um, she's cute. And um, it says the accidental pinup is the fun, charming rom-com you've been waiting uh, to sweep, waiting for to sweep you off your feet. Cassie is a heroine to root for and you'll want to take an unapologetically sexy selfie while reading. Chemistry, humor, and joy are all wrapped in sheer fabric and lace in this luscious debut. I, I'm here for it. It's pink and purple and red. Like I was like, girl, yes, okay. I don't I don't know if this was on my TBR. It might have been, but I was like, again, it's here. I'm going to I'm going to check it out. Business not as usual okay it says a woman learns the hard way about mixing business with pleasure in this hilarious new romantic comedy by us today best-selling author shannon cooper playing the odds can pay off big time i this this is all i needed I, I don't care it's it's cartoony it's cute black author black male lead black female lead it was on my tbr I'm not going to read you all of the back. I, like I do that when I do like kind of what I read, like I did in my previous book video, but I'm, I'm not necessarily excited to read all of these because then we'd be here forever. But I, I'm going to link to all these books individually in my description box below and then also to my Amazon TBR, right? So let's get into it. So... Savvy Sheldon feels good as hell. I first of all, it's the cover. First of all, he's got a dog. That's cute. She's cute. I love it. It says one can't help but root for Savvy Sheldon, filled with hard humor and loads of feel good vibes. On the back, it says a delicious debut rom com about a plus size sweetheart who gets a full life makeover after a brutal brutal breakup. I'm reading this okay like it's cute it's purple she's cute it said rom-com I know I'm gonna like it okay next up is good morning love a novel it says a thrilling romance about an aspiring mu musician who would do anything to have the world sing her songs or so she thought again black male Black female lead, Good Morning Love. Simply put, Good Morning Love is your new favorite song in book form. Oh, and y'all know I love, I love music. I just, anyway, I'm tempted to read the back of this one. I'm, I'm not going to read it again. I'm excited for this one. And then I have two books by the same author. And these look a little thicky thick. So I have... The Hookup Plan and the Dating Playbook. Look at these covers. Look how cute these are. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't resist. These were definitely on my TBR. I think Good Morning Love, Business Not As Usual, Set and Savvy Sheldon for sure were on there. So um, the Dating Playbook, Love Never Plays by the Rules. Black Male, Black Female Lead. Two Best Friends, One Big Fake Boyfriend. I. That's all I need. Okay. Two, be two best friends, one fake boyfriend. Okay, so this is a fake dating trope, clearly. And this one says her worst enemy might just be her best mistake. Oh, okay, wait a minute. She's got close friends and an even closer enemy. Oh, she's a pediatric surgeon. 
Okay, I'm not even gonna get into it. Either either way, these are thickety thick. Let me see how many pages this is. This is oh, this is not that bad. It's 388 pages on this one, but but they look a little thick. And this one is very close, I believe. 370. Okay, these are thickety thick. This is by Farrah Roshan. It makes me want to say Farrah Roche, like the, the candy. <laughs> anyway, I'm excited. So, dating playbook, hookup plan. I want I to know which one of these is first. Okay. I don't know which one of, I don't know which one of these came first. I'm probably going to read them back to back. So, these two, loving that. These four. Good morning, love. Savvy Sheldon feels good as hell. Business not as usual. The accidental pinup. Okay. Then we have where we end and begin. I I feel like I feel like this this gonna do something to me. I don't know why. Let me just okay. Dooney hasn't seen her high school boyfriend Obena since she left Nigeria to attend college in America. Before their devastating separation, they vowed to find their way back to each other one day. Now it's 12 years later. I, I already know. I already know I'm going to cry. I already know I'm going to cry and I'm not mad about it. Oh, okay. So these are all three of her books that are going to get read down. And then... The Perfect Find by Tia Williams. And then these two hardbacks. <sighs> Y'all, I was so excited. And it's funny because when I got ready to check out the books, the, um, the lady was like, so you like romance? <laughs> I do. I do. Now, I will say this, y'all. I am considering. I am considering reading. Which this falls completely outside of the parameters I've set for my romance books. Uh, and I know one day I'm going to get here, right? But this is where I want to start. I'm considering reading Romancing Mr. Bridgerton. And let me tell you why. <laughs> I I did not think of myself as a huge Bridgerton fan, okay? I watched season one when he came out and was like, whoa, okay, y'all doing a lot, all right? It was cool. I never felt compared, compelled to go back and watch season one again, okay? Um, when season two came out, Viscount Bridget and Anthony, he really don't do it for me. So I didn't watch it. And y'all know, I talk about not having streaming apps, right? So I was like, I'm not about to sign up for Netflix. I don't even really want to see season two. The whole Cantony, Kane, Anthony thing, I, it, it wasn't drawing me in. When Queen Charlotte dropped, I was like, mm, I think I want to watch that. So I signed up for Netflix, watched Queen Charlotte one, two, maybe three times. And then canceled it. I loved Queen Charlotte. Very emotional, romantic. It's going to make you cry, etc. But I don't know what it was about season three of Bridgerton. Um, Colin and Penelope story that I was like, I think I want to watch this. So I, I go against my own rule and I sign up. It's not really a rule, right? But I, I sign back up for Netflix just so I can see season three of Bridgerton. Now, I, I, I do not do it when it first drops because I, I immediately saw the whole split season. Okay, they're going to release four episodes. You got to wait a month and they're going to release four more episodes. That does not work for my brain. I like a closed loop. You can, I, I, would, I would have been going insane waiting a month. Particularly once I watched, because I watched it in one sitting. I watched all episode, episodes in one sitting. I blocked out time on my calendar to do that. And I was like, there's no way I would have got to this cliffhanger in episode four and been able to hold on for, I, like I would have been going stir crazy. So I waited until part two came out and then I watched the whole thing and it's had me in a chokehold. Um, I have probably watched, I probably watched the whole season five or six times all the way through, but I've definitely watched certain episodes or certain scenes at least once a day 
since part two dropped. And I, I'm not a TV watcher. I'm not a show watcher. And this, and this is part of the reason why I don't think I ever talked about talked about this, but this is part of the reason why, because I, I I don't like the feeling and I can't get enough. And y'all, when I tell you, I was locked and loaded and glued in on the press tour. Okay. I couldn't get enough. I was watching analysis videos. It it was over the top. There are things that I love about season three. And there's some things that I'm very, very upset about with season three. Right. Um, I didn't mean to take this into a Bridgerton video. I said all that to say that because there are some things that I felt were lacking from season three. There are some things that I absolutely love, which has kept me watching, which has kept me. I'd be on threads talking to people about Bridgerton. I'm I'm, I'm completely fangirling over season three. I don't know what happened. I've never shipped a fake relationship like characters the way I've shipped them since Dwayne and Whitley in a different world in the 90s. Well, also, I did ship Khadijah and, and Scooter, but not this hard. Okay. And I'm like, what is happening to me? And so because of that, because I can't seem to get enough, because I can't seem to be satiated, I'm considering reading Romancing Mr. Bridgerton, the actual book. Every time I go into Target, I see it. Every time I go into Target and I see it, I pick it up. Every time I go into Target and I see it and I pick it up, I read a little snippet and I'm intrigued. I've watched analysis videos about it. So I know the plot. I know the differences. I know the differences in the character. I don't care. Okay. I feel like I can't get enough. And so I don't know what happened to me. I don't like it. Um, This is why I don't like watching shows. But if that happens to pop up and you're like, I thought you were on a black romance, black author, black male, black female lead type situation. I'm telling you right now, that's what happened. Okay. I'm so tempted to go and read that. So there are some other books that I really want to read as well. Curvy Girl Summer is one of them. And Part of My Frenchie is another one. Um, I would have to go buy those. I think Part of My Frenchie was being unpacked in my library. And so it's not going to be available until they reopen at their temporary location in September. I really want to read Curvy Girl Summer before the summer is over right but anyway okay it turned into a super long Bridgerton thing at the end uh let me know what books are on your physical TBR I'm gonna as always I'll link to these books directly and then also I'm going to share my current TBR with my list of black owned black owned (laughs) I guess technically it would be black owned but black author black romance black male black female lead books in the description box below and yeah y'all that's it I can't believe look at me I'm a book girly like maybe not like a booktuber book girly you know that level where it's like all because I I still love the makeup I still love the intentional living I still love all of that but it is a new wonderful hobby to get me off of social media I be getting caught up in these stories like in my last video like the fact that I'm starting to remember characters names and I'm like I need to go visit Bo from by the book I need to go see about a Marie and Vincent from the kiss countdown like do you know what I mean I've even I have even brought somebody over to borrow one of my books I think I did the book um I talked about the book the referral program I told one of my homegirls about it I was like it's cute it's a quick read you probably can read it in a day we were at a friend's um birthday party and it wasn't that far far from where I live and so I was like, well, you can just come to my house and borrow the book. Who am I? Who am I? I drove her to my house so that she could borrow the book. And then we drove back to the birthday party. I want to go to Barnes and Noble now as much as I want to go to Sephora. Anyway, that's where we are. So (laughs) 
Let me know what you've been reading, what you've been loving. Uh, are there any books that are not on my TBR that should be? They can be old. They can be new. They can be somewhere in the middle. Let me know. Let me know. Have you read any of these books? And with no spoilers, please let me know if you liked them, if you didn't like them, if they were just meh. Let me know. I would love to know in the comments below. And uh, let me know. Should I read Romancing Mr. Bridgerton? <laughs> okay. All right. I'll talk to you in my next video. Peace.